Good everyone, my name is Graphics. In today's tutorial, we are told to find the resultant force and the direction of this concurrent coplanar force. The reason why it is called a concurrent force is because they are all meeting at one point, right? That is the point of concurrence. And why we also call it a coplanar force because they are all on the same plane. Now this force, this concurrent coplanar force has three, have four different forces, right? Which one of the force F1 has a magnitude of 300 Newton inclined at an angle of 60 degree to the horizontal. The other one, F2, has a magnitude of 400 Newton inclined at an angle theta. The third force, F3, is has a magnitude of 150 Newton inclined at an angle of 60 degree to the horizontal, right? And the um, fourth one, F4, has a magnitude of 360 Newton inclined at an angle of alpha to the horizontal so what we have to look for here first of all look for theta and alpha right we don't know them but we are given a lead and what is the lead we are given a slope acting in each of the force on that um quadrant right like the slope here we have three and four on that magnitude of um, 400 newton that's force there and we have the other slope which is inclined at angle of alpha to the horizontal it has a slope along the f4 um, force right so let's start the first thing we'll do when you look at this problem is to calculate for theta and alpha now I will take you down the memory lane, right? If you look closely at the 400 Newton, the F2 force, right? Discover that there's a right angle that is inclined along that force, right? Now, that is just a smaller right angle. Do you know we have a bigger right angle there? Because we are not given an angle in that angle, in that triangle. So how can we get the angle in that triangle? We use our knowledge of similar triangles. How did I mean? If you look closely, if I complete this here, look at what I'm having. I'm having a bigger triangle, right? So if this is 3, automatically... Is the same triangle that we have here, right? So it means that if the angle here is theta, the angle here also is what is theta, right? So we are going to bring out that triangle. Now bring it out. This is what we have here. Is that again? And um, this is three here. This is four here. So this is the angle here, theta. Are we good? Now. If you look at this, where the angle is pointing is our opposite, while the other side is our adjacent. So if you look where opposite and adjacent are coming together, what is connecting them is tan. So tan theta is equals to the opposite, which is 3, over the adjacent, which is 4. And if you divide 3 by 4, you'll be having 0 0.75. So if I make theta the solid of the formula, we'll be having tan alpha is equal tan alpha tan we're having tan inverse 0 0.75, right? So my theta here will be equal to 36.87. Is that the key? So we've got in theta. Now if you look at that means the angle here, if this is theta, that means the angle at this domain here. Is giving us what theta which is 36.87 now there's something I want to show you now you see this is let's take this to be north and it should be what west right and what's made 
cone, they are perpendicular to each other. The angle between the north and the west here is given to be what? 90 degree. Are we together? Now, if you remove 36.87 from 90, what will you be having? That will be 53.13. So, meaning my theta is given as what? 53.13 at this part here. Is that okay? So, meaning if you sum 53.13, and 36.87 you have a 90 degree is that again so we've gotten the theta that we're looking for right now we'll move forward if you look at the f4 force which has a magnitude of 360 there's also a triangle the right angle triangle that is um that is along that force right now if I the same thing that apply to the first one, if I complete this this way, what do you notice? We have a bigger triangle, so we have to look for alpha. So if here is alpha, automatically this part here is also called alpha. So let me bring out the triangle here. If I bring it out, we we'll apply the same thing. Is that the key? So this is five, this is twelve, and this is alpha. So if you do the needful. Where the alpha, the angle is facing is 12, so that will be my opposite. Where the other part here is my what? My adjacent. So my tan alpha will be equal to what? Opposite, which is 12, over adjacent, which is what? 5. So if you divide 12 by 5, you'll be having 2.4. So my alpha will now be equal to tan inverse 2.4. So my alpha is equal to what? 67.38, right? So the alpha here is 7.38. Now if you subtract it, let's assume this is my south and this is my east. In between south and east is 90 degrees since they are perpendicular to each other. So if you subtract 67.38 from 90, you'll be left with 22.62 degree. Right? So these are the two forces we have depending on where you are working with. So we successfully got in alpha and theta, right? Now, what we'll do here is that we want to look for the resultant force of this given concurrent coplanar force. Is that again? So we know that our resultant force is giving us the square root of summation of f of x all square plus summation of f of y all square right so for we to get our resultant force we need to look for the summation of f of x right and we need to look for the summation of f of y so let's start this is my equation one here so let's see for summation of f of x listen carefully before i can get to f1 force that is the 300 the 300 newton the magnitude of 300 newton force here i need to move let's say this is zero Pay attention. This is 90. This is 180. This is 270. These are the four cardinals that we have here. Is that the key? And we are moving in an anticlockwise direction. Now, from zero now, before I get to 300 Newton force, F1, I'm going to move an angle, or will I say a displacement, angular displacement of what? Of 60 degree right I will move an angle of what 60 degree if I can get to 300 Newton so it means that the first force here will be 300 cos 60 now we move forward if I move again the vertical force here like the North Pole here with 90 degree right before I get from that 90 before I get to the next force I'm going to add a something to 90 to give me where this 400 newton force is that is the f2 and what is that i'll add to it it will be 36.87 right because if you add 36.87 to 90 it would lead me to where this force is so i'm having i will now have 400 cross open bracket 90 plus 36.87 is that the key now we move forward plus we take the next one again before i get to the next force the next force is above 180 is that again 
the next one is what above 180 so what will i add is above 180 but below 270 you can see this is 180 and this is 270 so before i get to this particular force i will add a particular range of a particular angle right to this particular angle we have here which is 180 that will get me to where this force is so if i add this 60 degree to this 180 it will lead me to where the f3 force is which is 150 newton right so i'll be having 150 cos open bracket 180 plus what 60. now plus before i get to the next force f4 which has a magnitude of 360 newton look at it is above 270 but it is less than 360. so i'm going to add something to 270 that will make get me to where this force is and what will i add I'm going to add 22.62. So I'll be having 360 cos 270 plus 22.62. Put it in brackets. So this is what we have here. So if I should do further um, modification to my answers here, I'll be having my summation of F3 will be equals to 300 cos 60 plus 400 cos 90 plus 36.87 is 126.87 plus 150 cos 180 plus 60 will give us 240 so we have 150 cos 240 then we have 270 plus 2.62 we have 292.62 so we're having 360 cos 292.62 now this will now give me cos i mean 300 cos 60 will give you 150 plus 400 cos 126.87 give us minus 240 i'll put it in bracket plus 150 cos 240 will give you minus 75, put it in bracket, plus 360 cos 292.62 give me 138.46, right? So if I do the needful here, I'll be having 150 plus times minus will give you minus, this will be 240, minus times plus will give you minus, we have 75, plus 138.46. Now if you do your arithmetic here, it will be having our total value for summation of f of x to give me minus 26.54 newton right so this is what we have here now the beauty about this method i'm using is if i now want to get my summation of f of y i don't have to do anything much i'll just have to change all the cos i have to sine you see the trick so you do the more work when you are dealing with the first one but when you're dealing with the other one I do little or nothing. So I'll just change everywhere I see cos in my summation of f of s, I will change it to sine in my summation of what f of y, right? So we'll do that. So I'll be having 300 sine 60 plus 400 sine 126.87 plus 150 sine 240 plus 360 sine 292.62 right you see i change all the cost to what to sign now before i move forward please if you are finding this video helpful please don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel and share if possible thanks so we proceed now if you press 300 sin 60 on your calculator you'll be having 259.80 plus if you type 400 sin 126.87 on your calculator you'll be having 319.99 plus if you punch 150 sine 240 on your calculator you'll be having minus 129.90 plus if you have 292 you press 360 sine 292.62 on your calculator you'll be having minus 332.31 right so this is what we have here so if i move further i'll be having 259.80 plus 319.99 plus times minus will give us minus so we have 129.90 minus times plus give you minus so we have 332.31 so if you do the arithmetic in your calculator you will have in 117.58 as our answer now remember there are different ways you can actually attempt this question this is one of the ways the other one we did earlier in the video um, my previous video was on resolution of forces. You have to resolve the forces, then you apply your condition for equilibrium. 
right you get the same value you can check the video by clicking this link at the top right corner of the screen here as you can see they will take you to that particular video that will show you another way you can go about this question right so most people prefer this way why others prefer the other one so the choice is yours so we're successfully getting my submission of f of y to be what 117.58 newton now the next thing we're calculating for would be the resultant force right so we now input our summation of f of x and f of y into equation one so doing that my resultant force will now give me the square root of anyway i see f of x i'll put minus one two six minus two six point five four in and uh, anyway i see f of y i'll put one one seven point five eight in the equation one so this will give me resultant force r will be equals to square root of minus two six point five four square plus one one seven point five eight square so this will now give you the square root of if you press minus two six point five four square we have in seven zero four point three seven plus if you punch one one seven point five eight square you'll be having one three eight two five point zero six now when you add the two of them you'll be having the square root of one four five two nine point four three and this will give us the square root of that will give us one hundred and twenty point five three newton approximately 121 newton so this is the magnitude of those forces that you see that is meeting at the point called the point of concurrence right now the next thing is um the direction and the sense of the resultant force right so the, di the direction of the sense now we know that to calculate for direction we say that tan theta is equals to summation of f of y over summation of f of x and um, tan theta here will now give us f of y will give us 117.58 and f of x will give us negative 26.54 at the end of the day we have in tan theta to be equals to negative 4.430 right my theta will now be equals to tan inverse of 4.430 just put the negative aside first so theta will now give me 77 minus that will be 77.28 degree so this is what we have here now because of this is negative right you will not look make use of your quadrant in mathematics is that taken and you look in the quadrant where tan is negative so tan is negative in the first in the second quadrant and tan is negative in the fourth quadrant so what you do is you're not going to since in the second quadrant the angle there is 180 minus theta so you subtract 180 you subtract 77.28 from 180 you get your answer and also you subtract 77.28 from 360 because on that quadrant we have 360 minus theta right so you subtract 77.28 from that 360 so you have your answer you can put it in the comment section to tell me what you get as your theta 1 and theta 2 right so let's compare and see how we we'll go so viewers if you have found this video helpful please don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel graphics tutors and also share the video thanks for watching